USA, USA. They take on Belgium now as they advance to the round of 16, the knockout round, as the soccer people like to say. Ty Keo is with us, former U.S. soccer team member, soccer broadcaster, all-around great guy. Ty Keo, thanks for joining us here in St. Louis on the Big 550 KTRS. Glad to be here, McGall. All right, let's talk about last night's, uh, yesterday's game. Uh, your thoughts as you watched it. I watched it at Schneidhorst with a bunch of soccer fans, and they never relaxed until five minutes after the game. Well, you couldn't relax because it was uh, still depending on the result in the other match, Portugal and Ghana. So uh, the U.S. pretty much did what they needed to do, but they needed some help, essentially uh, backing in out of the group of death. I mean, that's critical. Most folks, myself included, I gave them a 50-50 chance at best to get out of the, the group of death when I saw the World Cup draw last December. Uh, so they have managed to move on. And in that particular game yesterday, if you want to talk about just doing what they needed to do, uh, I heard some commentary on radio uh, guys criticizing the U.S. They should have attacked more. They should have been more offensive. And, and I'm like, these guys don't get it. Uh, you don't want to open yourself up against a sort of devastating counterattacking team like the Germans. So the key, and I talked about this before the game, the key was to keep the match very close, keep it as close as possible, as tight as possible. That's what the U.S. managed to do. The other result went in their favor, and they move on. I will say this, that soccer, uh, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's this world conversation, this U.S. conversation going on, the people who love soccer and, and the people who don't follow it. I'm one of the ones who don't follow it, but I can at least appreciate the brilliance of some of the goals that were scored, that last second goal with, with Portugal and that Germany goal yesterday, that's about as pretty of an athletic um, uh, uh, accomplishment as you can see. Well, the technical ability of, of many of these players at the speed of play and the physical aggressiveness, think about it, these guys executing those types of strikes on goal while someone's sliding into them or, or uh, coming into them with a strong shoulder. So it's, it's a lot of aggressiveness, but being able to rise above that physical aggressiveness and still execute perfect technical ability on those types of goals, no question. Think, those are things of beauty. Yeah, and that, that, that cross that uh, Ronaldo had, I mean, that's just, that's just poetry, really, when you get right down to it. Well, it is. I mean, think about it. Uh, it, it pinpoint accuracy on the full run uh, to be able to look up and pick the guy out it's, it's akin to an NFL quarterback, except this guy's doing it with his feet uh, at full speed and still being able to cross the ball across his body directly onto his teammate's head for a beautiful finish. So much has been made about getting out of group play. Now that the U.S. is actually out of group play, it sounds like, and my question is, how much damage can they do in this round of 16? Well, like any sort of competition where it's a knockout stage, uh, it, it comes down to who wants the game most. And the U.S. team has proven uh, that they have a lot of grit uh, and they have a, enough skill. Uh, they probably will need to possess the ball better than they have in the last couple of games. Uh, Michael Bradley, he's more or less their quarterback in midfield, uh, has had subpar performances by his normally high standards. Uh, he needs to help us keep the ball more. Uh, Jermaine Jones, another central midfielder for the U.S., sometimes plays a little bit wider than Bradley, uh, has been one of the best midfielders in the tournament just for sheer durability, just for sheer work rate and winning balls at midfield, getting into the attack. He scored a brilliant goal, if you recall, uh, to put us ahead against, ahead against Portugal, uh, a thing of beauty as well. Uh, so the U.S. team, they can move on. Uh, they're not expected to get past a, uh, a team like Belgium, which is loaded with individual talents. Uh, but I think the U.S. team, if they pull together as a team, can play uh, a better overall style than the Belgians in terms of collectively being more of a team than a collection of individuals. Belgium, I think, has uh, the, all the pieces, but they haven't pulled them together. I think the U.S. has pulled together more than the Belgian team, and that could be the difference. Uh, Ty Kia with us, former U.S. soccer member. Uh, Ty, they've talked about soccer exploding in this country for 30-plus years, and every time they say it's going to, you know, when we hosted the World Cup back in the early 90s, oh, this is going to be it, no, this is going to be it. It, it, it. Is this finally it? I mean, some of the ratings for these games are, are out of control. Every bar, every restaurant, everybody in the U.S. is talking World Cup soccer is this the thing that will finally break through for the U.S.? 
Well, it depends on how you define it. I, I think there's already been some major breakthroughs in terms of the U.S. team's competitiveness on the world stage. In terms of the interest by especially young people, the demographics are, are, are fantastic for soccer. And when you see the, the images coming from, like, the Power and Light District in Kansas City or Grant Park in Chicago or in, in Los Angeles and in and Manhattan and, and Hoboken and these places, the young people, they recognize the global reach of the sport. And they want to participate. I think the, the youth of America now, because of the Internet, uh, because of satellite television, they get these images from all over the world instantaneously, and, and, and there's a spark, and it's catching fire. Now, you know, is soccer going to surpass the NFL? I, don't, I think there's no chance of that. But is it become more uh, of the fabric of the U.S. culture, and especially for young people? I think so. And the farther the U.S. team goes in this tournament, the more that will move in that direction. Uh, lastly, uh, about the team, they, they, they've they made it, from what I understand, out of group play before, but this is such a big deal because that group was so difficult. Clearly, soccer experts are saying that the level of play by U.S. teams has grown exponentially over the last 15, 20 years. Would you agree? Yeah, the, the U.S. team uh, comes out now thinking they can win. Uh, the U.S. teams I played for, if we were going to play a European power like Belgium, uh, and, and, and I'm being serious here, we would go in and say, look, we hope we only lose by two or three goals, not six. Uh, you know, so we would, we would try to contain the damage. Uh, the last two or three World Cups, we have players uh, that have the confidence, and, and I think overall there's better organization in terms of U.S. soccer, the sponsorship, the amount of resources available to prepare these players and prepare these teams. Uh, and the coaching, uh, I think education in this country has has gone up to such a higher level that we have players that go in and, and play a team like Belgium, play a team like Germany, and say, you know what, we could win this game, and, and we're going to go out and we're going to try to play as if we expect to win it, even though they know we're not a world soccer power yet. I will say this, that as a non-soccer fan, uh, I sure am actually enjoying it, and I'm enjoying all the uh, all the pomp, all the circums, you know, all the the pageantry, all of everything surrounding it. I'm I don't know if I'm caught up in it, but I sure do like watching it. If that makes any it's, sense, it's a massive party. I've, I've attended seven World Cups, and it, there's nothing like it. I mean, the people are just enthralled by the skill of the players, and like what you said, that that atmosphere of of just it's a big party. You're going to see a lot of different things you've never seen in your entire life. You can see people from all over the world, just all hoping to have a great time and see great soccer. And it's it's the biggest world party. Unfortunately, it only happens once every four years. Yeah. The uh, U.S. plays Belgium when? When is that game? That will be Tuesday, July 1st, and the kickoff is 3 p.m. Central Time. It also works that you don't have to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to watch these games, too. <laughs> well, the World Cup in 2002 was in Korea and Japan, and that's when, the, when you had those uh, 4 a.m. Uh, kickoffs and so forth. But uh, No, these times work out pretty well. Uh, I was out at Ballpark Village yesterday. Uh, the St. Louis Ambush sponsored a, a real nice viewing party down there, and that was packed. Ballpark Village was packed, people going crazy, watching the USA just hang on enough to, to work their way out of the group of death. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Ty Keo, thank you for spending a couple minutes minutes with us. We love, we love your insight. All right, appreciate it. You guys enjoy the rest of the World Cup, and the USA hopefully can extend their run. There you go. Thank you, Ty right. Keo, uh, former U.S. Uh, soccer team member, soccer broadcaster, uh, all-around great guy, friend of the show. Nice of him to stop by, have a little fun. Set at 920 here on the Big 550.